2030, just about seven years from now, and the whole world is on the brink of a catastrophic energy crisis. The demand for oil and gas has skyrocketed while the supply has dwindled. Climate change has wreaked havoc on the planet, causing extreme weather events, natural disasters, and mass migrations. The international community is divided and desperate, scrambling for solutions to avert a global meltdown. But one entity has a powerful plan to dominate the world's energy market, an entity that has been quietly and secretly plotting for decades manipulating the oil prices, influencing the geopolitics, and investing in alternative energy sources. An entity that is part of a new world order, where it holds the ultimate power and control over the fate of humanity. That entity is OPEC. You see, OPEC, or the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, is a cartel of 13 oil-rich nations that produce about 40% of the world's crude oil and 15% of its natural gas. OPEC's members are Algeria, Angola, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Libya, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Venezuela. Together, they have a combined population of over 400 million people and a GDP of over 3 trillion. OPEC's philosophy is simple, to coordinate and unify their petroleum policies in order to secure fair and stable prices for their oil exports, while ensuring an efficient and regular supply of petroleum to consuming nations. OPEC's strategy is to use their collective bargaining power to influence the global oil market while balancing the interest and needs of their individual members. As you'll later find out, OPEC is evolving from an oil cartel to an energy superpower by acquiring and investing in zero emissions energy production such as hydrogen, wind, and solar energy. The energy organization plans to collaborate with BRICS countries, that is, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, which are emerging as major players in the global energy market, while competing and clashing with Western governments, imposing strict regulations and sanctions on fossil fuels. OPEC's plan is about to be unveiled, and it will shock the whole world. This is the story of how OPEC's powerful plan leads to the domination of the world energy market. Stay tuned because we'll take you behind the scenes of OPEC's secret meetings, negotiations, and deals in just a bit. This story will expose OPEC's cheating and collaboration among its members. We will also reveal OPEC's acquisitions and investments in renewable energy projects. Follow closely until the end because we will examine OPEC's relationship with BRICS countries and their impact on the global energy landscape. This story will change everything you thought you knew about the future of energy. The year was 1960. The world was in turmoil. The Cold War was raging. The decolonization movement was spreading and the oil industry was booming. In this chaotic and uncertain environment, a group of five oil producing countries decided to join forces and form a new organization, OPEC. OPEC, or the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, was founded by Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. Their primary objective was to coordinate and unify their petroleum policies and secure fair and stable prices for their oil exports. They also wanted to protect their interest and sovereignty from the interference of Western powers, especially the United States and Britain, who had dominated the oil market for decades. You see, OPEC's philosophy was based on the concept of a cartel, a group of producers who agree to control the supply and price of a commodity. OPEC could influence the global oil market and maximize its profit by acting as a single entity. OPEC's official oil price, or the price at which it sold its oil to other countries, was determined by a complex formula that considered various factors such as production costs, demand, supply, and geopolitical events. OPEC's philosophy soon proved to be successful. Within a few years, OPEC became a powerful force in the global energy market, controlling more than half of the world's oil production and exports. OPEC's influence on oil prices and energy policies affected not only the economies of its member countries, but also those of its customers and competitors. 
Now, OPEC's rise to power did not go unnoticed by Western governments, who saw it as a threat to their interest and influence. Western governments tried to undermine OPEC's power and stability by various means, such as imposing sanctions, supporting coups, instigating wars, and manipulating markets. However, OPEC managed to survive and thrive against these challenges using diplomatic and economic strategies. OPEC's main diplomatic strategy was establishing relations with other developing countries, such as Africa, Asia, and Latin America. OPEC supported their struggles for independence and development and offered them financial and technical assistance. OPEC also sought cooperation with other international organizations, such as the United Nations, the Non-Aligned Movement, movement and the Group of 77. OPEC's diplomatic efforts helped it gain recognition and respect in the international arena. One of the OPEC's main economic strategies was to diversify its sources of income and investment. The energy organization realized that relying solely on oil revenues was risky and unsustainable in the long run. Therefore, it invested in other sectors such as agriculture, industry, tourism, education, health, and infrastructure. OPEC also created its own financial institutions, such as the OPEC Fund for International Development, which provided loans and grants to developing countries for various projects. OPEC's diplomatic and economic strategies enabled it to overcome some of the most critical moments in its history, such as Number 1. The 1973 Oil Embargo In response to the U.S. support of Israel during the Yom Kippur War, OPEC imposed an oil embargo on the U.S. and its allies. This caused a global oil crisis that quadrupled oil prices and triggered economic recession in many countries. Number 2. The 1980s Price War In response to the oversupply of oil on the market due to increased production from non-OPEC countries such as Mexico, Norway, Britain, and Saudi Arabia decided to increase its own production and lower its prices. This sparked a price war that caused oil prices to plummet from $40 per barrel in 1980 to $10 per barrel in 1986. Number 3. The 2014 to 2016 Oil Glut In response to the surge of shale oil production in the U.S. due to technological innovations such as fracking and horizontal drilling, OPEC decided not to cut its production and maintain its market share. This resulted in an oversupply of oil in the market that caused oil prices to drop from $110 per barrel in 2014 to $30 per barrel in 2016. While OPEC presented itself as a unified organization with common goals and interests, the reality was more complex and nuanced. Its members often had different agendas that sometimes conflicted with each other. As a result, there was a delicate balance between collaboration and competition within OPEC. Now, one of the main sources of tension within OPEC was cheating. Cheating refers to the practice of producing more oil than agreed upon by OPEC quotas. Quotas limit how much oil each member country can produce and export. OPEC sets them based on various factors such as demand, supply, reserves, and costs. Cheating is tempting for OPEC members because it allows them to increase their revenues and market share. However, cheating is risky because it undermines the organization's credibility and effectiveness. If too many members cheat, the supply of oil in the market will exceed the demand, lowering the price and hurting all members. But here's what's disturbing. The more oil a country can produce, the more likely it is to cheat. For example, Saudi Arabia, which has the largest production capacity in OPEC, has been accused of cheating several times by other members. And if you think that's shocking, wait until you hear this. The more pressure a country faces from outside forces, such as sanctions, wars, or economic crisis, the more likely it is to cheat. For example, Iraq, which has been under sanctions and invaded by the U.S. in 2003, has been struggling to meet its OPEC obligations and quotas. OPEC tries to prevent and punish cheating by various means, such as monitoring production levels, imposing fines, conducting audits, and applying peer pressure. However, these measures are not always effective or enforceable. Therefore, OPEC relies on trust and cooperation among its members to maintain its cohesion. 
The world is facing a looming global energy crisis that threatens the future of humanity. Burning fossil fuels such as oil and gas, for example, releases greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. These gases trap heat and cause global warming, which leads to extreme weather events, rising sea levels, melting ice caps, loss of biodiversity, and more hazardous effects. To combat climate change, many nations have set ambitious targets to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2030 and beyond. This means they must stop emitting more greenhouse gases than they can remove from the atmosphere. To achieve zero emissions targets, many countries and regions have to transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy such as wind, solar, hydro, and geothermal, among others. But as more countries switch to renewable energy sources, the demand for oil and gas will decline. This will lower the revenues for OPEC members. And as more countries and regions develop their own renewable energy sources, they will become less dependent on OPEC imports. This will reduce OPEC's market share and influence. OPEC faces a new challenge, adapting quickly to the changing global energy landscape or become irrelevant. The truth is, OPEC is not oblivious to the looming global energy crisis. In fact, OPEC has been aware of the need to adapt to the changing energy landscape for a long time. OPEC has been evolving its strategy to cope with new realities and opportunities over the years. One of the main aspects of OPEC's evolving strategy is improved communication and cooperation among its members. OPEC has realized that to survive and thrive in the new energy era, it has to act as a unified organization with a clear vision and direction. Therefore, it has enhanced its internal mechanism mechanisms for dialogue and decision-making among its members. The organization has also increased the frequency and quality of meetings and consultations among its experts. But that's not all. OPEC has recognized that to maintain its relevance and influence of the global energy market, it has to diversify its portfolio and embrace new energy sources. Therefore, it has invested in various hydrogen, wind, solar, and biofuel projects. These projects aim to reduce its carbon footprint and increase its contribution to sustainable development. In reality, OPEC's evolving strategy reflects its willingness and ability to adapt to the changing energy landscape. Its evolving strategy is a complex and dynamic process that involves trade-offs and uncertainties. However, it is also an inevitable process that reflects its adaptation to the changing global energy landscape. If you don't mind, consider hitting the subscribe button. It really helps our channel grow. Now, OPEC is not only investing in its own alternative energy projects, but also acquiring and investing in other companies and startups that are involved in the renewable energy sector. Its aggressive acquisitions and investments are part of its powerful plan to dominate the global energy market. According to a report by Bloomberg, OPEC acquired SunPower, a U.S.-based company leading in solar power systems in 2022. OPEC paid $3.2 billion for the deal, which gave it access to SunPower's advanced solar panels, inverters, batteries, and software. It also gained a foothold in the U.S. market, one of the largest and fastest growing markets for solar energy. According to a report by Reuters, OPEC invested $500 million in Hydrogenius, a German-based startup pioneer in hydrogen storage technology in 2023. It acquired a 25% stake in the startup, which enabled it to benefit from Hydrogenius Innovation Liquid Organic Hydrogen Carrier Technology, which allows for safe and efficient storage and transport of hydrogen. OPEC also strengthened its presence and influence in Europe, one of the most ambitious and progressive regions for hydrogen energy. The truth is, OPEC's acquisitions and investments in the renewable energy sector are part of its powerful plan to dominate the global energy market. By acquiring and investing in these companies and startups, OPEC diversifies its portfolio, reduces its dependence on oil and gas revenues, and adapts to cutting-edge technologies and innovations to enhance its alternative energy production and efficiency. But that's not all. OPEC is expanding its presence and influence in different markets with high demand for renewable energy. As if that's not enough, 
The organization is creating partnership with other players in the renewable energy sector that can complement its strengths and capabilities. Now, OPEC is not only acquiring and investing in alternative energy projects, but also marketing them to the public as part of its strategic plan to dominate the global energy market. OPEC's marketing strategy is designed to achieve two things. Number one, to improve its image and reputation as an environmentally responsible organization that cares about the planet and its people. Number two, to increase its market share and influence as a leading provider of sustainable energy solutions that meet the needs and expectations of customers. As part of its PR strategy, OPEC's new logo features a green leaf symbolizing nature and life. Its new slogan is OPEC Energy for All. The organization's new website showcases its alternative energy projects and achievements. Besides, OPEC has engaged in various activities to advocate for its alternative energy projects to the relevant stakeholders. For example, it has participated in summits and forums that bring together leaders and experts from different sectors and fields to address the global energy crisis and climate change. OPEC is not alone in its powerful plan to dominate the global energy market. It strongly connects with another group of countries that are rising in power and influence, BRICS. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. These five countries are considered emerging economies that significantly impact global affairs. Though the five countries have a combined population of over 3 billion people, which accounts for more than 40% of the world's population. They have a combined GDP of over 20 trillion, which accounts for more than 20% of the world's GDP and have been growing at an average annual rate of over 5% in the past decade. But that's not all. BRICS countries have various natural resources, such as oil, gas, coal, uranium, gold, diamonds, and more. The five countries also have a wide range of human resources, such as scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs. You see, BRICS countries greatly influence OPEC strategies and global energy dominance. First, the five countries are among the world's top producers of oil and gas. Russia is the second largest producer of oil after Saudi Arabia and the largest gas producer in the world. Brazil is the world's ninth largest oil producer and has a huge offshore oil reserve. China is the world's fourth largest oil producer and has vast shale gas resources. India is the world's 10th largest oil producer and has significant coal bed methane resources. South Africa is the world's seventh largest coal producer and has potential for shale gas exploration. But there's more. BRICS countries are among the world's top consumers of oil and gas. China is the world's largest oil consumer after the U.S. and the third largest gas consumer in the world after the U.S. and Russia. India is the third largest consumer of oil in the world after China and the U.S. and the fourth largest gas consumer after China, Russia, and the U.S. Brazil is the eighth largest consumer of oil in the world and the tenth largest consumer of gas in the world. Russia is the ninth largest largest consumer of oil in the world and the second largest consumer of gas in the world. South Africa is the 11th largest consumer of oil in the world and the 14th largest gas consumer globally. BRICS countries are not only related to OPEC but also cooperate with OPEC on some issues. The alliance shares some common goals with OPEC, such as ensuring energy security and stability for their economies. It also helps enhance energy cooperation among developing countries and challenges Western hegemony and interference in global energy affairs. For example, the OPEC BRICS Energy Dialogue is a regular forum that brings together energy ministers and exports from OPEC and BRICS countries to exchange views and information on energy issues and trends. The dialogue Log aims to foster mutual understanding and cooperation on energy matters that affect both groups. The OPEC BRICS Energy Investment Fund is a joint fund that provides financing for energy projects that benefit both OPEC and BRICS countries. 
The fund focuses on supporting alternative energy projects that contribute to sustainable developmental goals. The OPEC Breaks Energy Research Center is a joint center that conducts research and analysis on energy issues and challenges that affect both OPEC and BRICS countries. The center provides policy recommendations and solutions for enhancing energy cooperation and innovation. OPEC's connection with BRICS countries is part of its powerful plan to dominate the global energy market. By cooperating with BRICS countries, OPEC can leverage their resources, markets, and technologies to enhance its alternative energy production and efficiency. Moreover, OPEC can strengthen its position and influence in the global energy market by aligning its interests with those of BRICS countries. In conclusion, OPEC's powerful plan is an obscure but ambitious vision for the future of energy. It is a plan that could change the world as you know it. Let us know in the comments section what you think about OPEC's plan to dominate the energy industry. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and I'll I'll see you guys in the next video.